G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well the weather report, 14 to 23, uh, we have this last week we've had just beautiful sunny days, like not a cloud in the sky, um, it's starting to come over a little bit cloudy, there's a, there's a bit of a front coming over from the west later in the week and um, I think New South and the southeast corner of Queensland is going to get some, we're probably going to get a bit no doubt but um, uh, it's still a lovely day, the sun's shining this morning. There is a little bit of cloud coming in and um, it's just mottly sort of cloud and um, yeah, it'll cool the day down a little bit. But 23, look, 23 is great. It's not bad at all. Um, Saturday we had a beautiful sunny day and um, with, the, um, with the stew, and I, I put a clip out on Facebook and Instagram last week about um, how much I'd got done for the shed, you know, one man, a forklift and a spanner. And um, anyway, my mate Dave from Brisbane, he always said to me, um, he says, when you're putting that thing up, I'll come and give you a hand. He says, you love coming up your place and buggering around and he says, I'll give you a hand. And anyway, I hadn't called him or anything. And anyway, um, I put it on Facebook and it's on Facebook half an hour and I got his missus, Dave wants to know you want a hand on the weekend. <laughs> and, uh, <coughs> I mean, and um, yeah, can we come and stay and, and we'll come and give you a hand with the shed? And I said, oh, look, yeah, that'd be lovely. So <clears throat> they usually come and camp in a caravan in the paddock. And this time they said, yeah, can we just, well, we said, yeah, what do you want to bring the van or you want to stay in the spare room or what would you like to do? And they said, look, spare room would be easy. They could just finish work and run up and away they went. So, um, so yeah, Friday afternoon, <coughs> but I mean, still a bit chesty with this flu. I'm, I'm mostly over it, but um, yeah, just a bit of hang on stuff. So, um, so yeah, Friday evening they come up and oh, we had a few beers and um, he bought this lovely bottle of port from Stanthorpe. So we, um, we hopped into a bit of that. And um, yeah, Tim and the kids come over for Friday night dinner as every second Friday they do that. And um, <coughs> so yeah, Friday we sat in the door of the shed here and drank beers and looked out the front and fixed the whole world's problems <laughs> and um and then we went up to the pool room and yeah judy had oh she had lasagna made and um shepherd's pie and oh with guinness in it and oh that's bloody give you a bit of a woody that would <laughs> but um yeah so saturday morning we we just had a cup and a bit of toast and a steady start and off we went come up the shed and my mate Paul, now my mate Paul, he, he's got that lovely little Austin and he comes and helps me and looks after the place when we're not here and he always said to me, he said, when you're putting that shed up, I want to come and give you a hand and you know, help out a bit and I said, oh well alright, because Paul's got his unit in town and um, it's an inner city unit and I, th I think he might get a bit bored in there. Um, and Anyway, so he said, when you're doing it, ring me, he said, I want to come and help. So I rang Paul and I said, look, Dave's coming up. He knew Dave, so I said, like, Dave's coming up and um, he's going to give me a hand with the shed on the weekend, I said, on Saturday. I said, do you want to, you know, you said you wanted to come out for a lap. You know, that's what we're doing. Feel free if you if you like to. So, yeah, he'll be there. So, so Paul come out and um, we got stuck into it for the day. And, oh, probably, like, we didn't start till <coughs> probably up about seven, eight in the morning, then we stopped for a nice long brunch sort of thing. Jude had made, um, um, well, the girls had been busy, they'd made sayos with cheese and tomato, like the old days, you know, and, and we were talking about the other day, and, you know, you'd, you'd have visitors, so you'd get a few jats and a bit of cheese and a bit of tomato and salt and pepper, and you'd have that and a bit of cake and a cuppa, and away you went, so, <coughs> so, yeah, they'd done that, and Jude had made homemade sausage rolls and, um, yeah, lamington fingers and all. Yeah, we fat pair of fat mob of bastards. Yeah, <laughs> so um, so we had a good good brunch and then we kept going. And um, Dave was the youngest one of us and got his bloody go. I kept us old farts going. Um, I'm coming up 62 in October. My mate Paulie 67, and Dave would be 47, 48. So he's got a few years on us and. Um, yeah, so he sort of took over the nut gun and <clears throat> when we put in the sheets up, we lifted the whole bundle of sheets up 
we put pallets on the forklift and lifted whole bundles of sheet up and we got the one down, Dave screwed it down and then he stayed up on the roof. Um, I was on the forklift moving it along, Paulie was up the ladder and as we needed a new sheet, Paul would lift one side and Dave would grab the other and drag it in and brip, 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 brip and, and the roof went on like, like lightning. And um, the, um, <laughs> the funny thing is, um, is Dave's Mrs Jody, she's a safety officer and um, <clears throat> they were coming up, Judy and, um, Judy and Jody, they were coming up and Jude said, oh, I'm going to wash the ute because we lent it to the kids and the sister, daughter-in-law was going to um, give it a wash, she told me, but she never did. And I was rattling her chain on Friday night about it and she says, oh, I never said that. I said, yeah, bloody well did. So um, <coughs> she says, I thought I left it to you to wash. I said, I know you bloody left it for me to wash, but you said you'd do it. So and Jude says, oh, she'd bloody do it. So Jude and Jody come up and then, um, so here's us, and we're using the forklift as a platform, and we found it just so much easier. I drove the forklift because it was my forklift, I knew how to go with it, and um, it's like it jumps out of reverse and a few things which I know about. And um, yeah, so Jude and, Dave, Jude and Jody come up to wash the car, and Jude says, Jody has mobility problems, she's got some sore feet and that, and um, so Jude had a, like a camp chair, and she says, um, you want me to put the chair around in the shade while I wash the car so you can watch what the fellas are doing? She says, I don't want to see what they're doing because, yeah, Dave, her hubby, he was on the forks, on the pallet. And, yeah, he'd be saying, up, and, uh, I'd, and okay, next one. So he'd come out and move across and, oh, he'd hang on and all that. And then up, and then when he wanted to get on the roof, he'd say, up, and then he'd go, what? And, you know, we'd just stop and we had this thing going that we understood. And, um, his missus as a safety girl, she's like, I don't want to sit around there looking at that. And so, um, but she didn't, didn't say anything, we just, um, we just kept going. She wouldn't have stopped us anyway. And um, so we got the iron on and we're all looking buggered. And um, I wasn't doing too much, you know, I was on the forklift. I had about the easiest job probably. And um, Dave was up the top and zink, zink, zink. And he's down to what, 70, 75 kilos or 70, yeah, anyway. And... Um, <coughs> So he's, he's buzzing all the screws in and, um, and I said, oh, look, that's enough, eh? You know, we've done enough for the day. And, you know, it was like 1.30 or something like that and it was getting hot. And he said, oh, no, no, we'll do the flashing. I want to finish that off before we go. Oh, all right. So we did the flashing and got it all cut in and all that. I've, I've still got to put screws underneath it. And, um, yeah, Paulie was where, where we had the kit out the front there. There was a heap of grass and weeds and... He was sort of a bit of loose end sometimes, he felt, so he'd be raking up and tidying up. And at the end of the day, he said, I don't think I've done much. And I said, God, would have been a lot bloody different without you because, yeah, when we're on the ladders and, you know, can you pass me up this? And we'd have a, putting in the, the 45 cross braces and all that. Well, Dave would be on one ladder on one side, I'd be on the other, and I'd be holding up and he'd be drilling. And Paul drilled all the holes in the brackets for us, so... Yeah, you're not up there in mid-air trying to get through three mil of steel then another three mil behind. So where the cross braces are, we've only got one bolt in each, um, one screw in each. Um, I will hop up and put more in. Um, but look, it's, it's good and stable. Um, it's bolted down well. And um, yeah, it's not going anywhere. So I'll get the gutter done over the next month or so. And um, I've got to drop it into, to get it certified, I've got to drop it down into a drain that I've, I've dug in by hand a piece of 100 mil um, storm water. So, <coughs> what I mean, so that's all done. Um, we used this stuff, Asiode, and that came with the shed kit. And boy, it sets like bloody, it sets really quick. But it comes, it comes with a little nozzle. And this little nozzle, you can see down in there, there's a little spiral. And when you, when you open this cartridge up, you pull the cap off and there's like a bit of plastic bag with a ring lock on the end. So you have to cut that off, then you screw this on. Then as you get the, the gun, you know, you know, your normal old cartridge gun, um, as you get the gun and you, you force it down, you can chop this off to sep different lengths. But we were going down, um, look, about 160 mil um, into the concrete. And 
using the, the screws that they supplied with the shed kit. And um, they're 16 millimeter galvanized screws. So I had a 16 millimeter masonry bit, but I bought a, it wasn't long enough. So I had to go to um, trade tools last week and buy one. And um, for about 24 bucks, you can buy a, a masonry bit with just two bits of carbide on it for going down. And yeah, you can feel them, you know, very violent sort of thing. Um, the bloke there, he said, look, for an extra 20 bucks, he said, I know it's $20, but you can have a Milwaukee one with four carbide cutters. And he said, you'll, you'll enjoy using that. And I said, oh, well, I've never tried them. So we did. And it was just smooth as one thing going down. It was, it was good to use. So, so yeah, Dave and myself and Paulie, we got the place all, got the post all squared up and measured out. And, and by the time we squared the post, measured from the end of the little slabs I put in, and did the diagonals, we were spot on, you know. We didn't, did not have to shift it a bit. Um, I reckon one place I could find two millimetres, but look, it's, it's just bang on, so we were very pleased. <coughs> but, so we went and drilled all the holes, and um, we, we actually hopped up. We set the posts in place, we squared the posts with the cross beams, and we put the cross braces in to hold everything true, and then we drilled the holes in the feet and um, we dug them, well, we drilled them, then blew them out and we just put a couple of bolts in um, just to hold everything in place, just to sit there so the feet didn't move and while we did other stuff to make sure and then because we only had one tube of this to do 12 holes, I was thinking, oh geez, I didn't want to sort of start, do one hole, two holes and get to the other end and I've got to go to town and get another tube so I didn't know how far it was going. So anyway, once we got that done and they were getting the flashing ready to put on and things, um, I said, right, I'll blow the holes out again, get the things out, blow them out and put this stuff down. So I did two, blew it out, did two, you know, um, used a nut gun to screw the threaded bar in and um, this stuff come out a little bit. I did three pumps and it was a bit too much, so I had to back it off. So I did that, screwed the bolts down into, went up to the next hole, me bloody gun collapsed. And I thought, you bloody thing. And so I had one here with the Bearco stuff. So I raced in and got that and went again and it folded up. What had happened was in, within a couple of minutes, and look, well, I, I got the nut going and, brrr, and you know, it would have been two or three minutes um, and this had gone off in the tip. And what was happening was I was pushing on it and, and this had gone off. But luckily they gave us two nozzles. So once we realised how volatile this stuff was, um, <clears throat> I'd wrecked two guns, but I had this old girl. And this old girl I've had for years and it's a... I remember it cost me a few bob, but it's, a, it's got a cast handle instead of a pressed tin handle and all that. So, um, so we wrecked two of them. And so once we worked out what was going on, um, I said to Dave, look, I'll... I'll put this shit down the holes and you come straight behind me and just rattle them in. So that's how we got it done in the end. Yeah, I put this down and like, rather than take a rest from doing this um, to put the holes in, I could just keep a flow going here so there was no chance of it going off in the nozzle. So that's what we did and it set like bloody, it, it set really hard. So we've got, the, we've got it bolted down, just nipped up and over the next day or so, I'll get a big spanner and I'll, I'll tighten them up a little further. If they'll go, if they don't, they're not going to come out. They're not going to go anywhere. So, so yeah, that was, <laughs> that was that stuff. So a um, bit of a learning curve. N none of us had seen it before. Like, <coughs> I mean, the last time I'd used, um, used um, like chem sets and you, you drilled the hole, you put your screw in and you bashed it with a hammer and a, um, it was like a test tube and you, you smashed the bolt down in over the test tube and, and the stuff mixed and come up the side and set hard. So, but this stuff, look, it, it seems to be good stuff. You just had to know how to use it. So, um, yeah, last week, because I had the flu, um, I only went to work on Friday. Um, the rest of the time, I've got my computer set up that I can do all the emails and YouTubes and um, Gmails and Queensland Tractor Speed stuff at home. So. I work from home just not to take the disease into, into the shop. So um, I did that on Friday, I went in. Um, Judy has Fridays off, so 
she had to get ready for Dave and Jody coming and um, pick the kids up from school for doing swimming and all that. So, um, so I went in on Friday. Um, yeah, Rod and um, oh, Rob and um, Nick, they were um, coming in to have a look at the 65 starter, do a collab thing, but they were going to ring, but I, I couldn't do it on the Thursday because I was crook and I didn't want to share it. Then on Friday, um, I was at the shop in the morning, and but I could be home in the afternoon, but I, I never heard, so we'll, I don't know, we'll, we'll work something out. Um, <clears throat> probably a Monday would be a better idea um, as I'm home on a Monday and I can film and I have time to do stuff, but through the rest of the week, holy shit, I'll get busy. So, and they must have keep me busy. <laughs> but, um, <coughs> pardon me, so <clears throat> the main news for the week is we've got the shed done um, and stuffed around. So today's Monday morning, first day in the shed, but um, I'm going to take a break from outside and shuffling shit. And I'm going to get over and do a few 65 videos. I've been wanting to do it, but I couldn't. Um, I had this shed thing going on and with... Um, with the weather being good enough to get those footings in, well, we did that. Then um, I got that frame set up last Monday, and then um, yeah, Dave and Jody come, and I, they were happy to come. They're going away next weekend, but they were happy to come. So you've got to use the opportunities that come your way. So, and look, I'm I'm grateful, boy. It, um, I would have been another month getting to where we are now. So yeah, really happy that they um, were able to come and help, and. Um, and drink some port and some beers. We got a milk crate half full of cans out there from just, um, when, when we got the roof on the flash and on, I said, look, fellas, that's enough. You know, you, it's only two in the afternoon, but I said, you know, I can't work is to death. Um, time for a beer, so, <coughs> you know I mean? <coughs> there wasn't much argument. <coughs> so I rang Jude and I said, bring a couple of camp chairs up and we got beer here already. And, um, some nibblies and we're just gonna sit and wet the roof of the shed. So we sat there until, I don't know, five o'clock or something like that, just having a beer and having a yarn and just passing the time away. So um, yeah, good fun, it was great. Um, but yeah, today, 65 day, um, I've just cleaned up the camera cards, got all the shit off them from everything else. There's gonna be videos at the end of a walk around of the shed. Um, I do have to, I got, I got me mate Ronnie's carby apart the other day, went round to bead blast a bit and I've got good air pressure and all there but something's gone wrong in the gun. So this morning I will have to pull that gun apart and just see what's going on. Um, it's a blockage because when you, when you pull the trigger, um, it's good for about two seconds. And I didn't know till um, when Dave was coming up, the forklifts had a bit of a miss and because it's a worn out petrol engine really, um, I have to clean the plugs reasonably regularly. So, um, um, so I thought, well, I was gonna clean the plugs and make sure it was right to go if I had help on the day. So, but I was flat cleaning four spark plugs with it. So I do have to look at that today. And um, at some time from where I've had the TE20 and the pallet in the doorway with the concrete and all that, and uh, I've been, I've got the big sandblaster half service, and I've got shit everywhere, really. <coughs> so, pardon me. So I've got a couple of maintenance jobs to do. Um, the compressor seems to be working well, and yeah, I've, I've got the manifold, the elbow, and all for the 65. So I'm gonna try and get that bottom end together and um, get that buttoned up. Um, I'm pretty keen to get onto the steering box and see. I see in town there at the moment, there's a, um, looks like a 65 Mark II with a front end loader on it. He said it was parked, and it's only locally for 2,000 um, bucks, but he wants to keep the wheels and tires. Well, I've got wheels and tires here I'd like to get rid of, so I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'll have a look at it or not. Like, this is enough, probably. We'll, we'll see how we go. Um, through the week, I bought a, a 12 volt DC power pack for the bench here. Now, this goes to 30 volt, 10 amp. And so what am I doing there? Well, um, sometimes for testing electrical stuff, just have a little power supply coming in and out and um, it will be handy. But I have had, um, I watched clock, um, 
Clough, Clough 42, C-L-O-U-G-H 42 on YouTube, and he's done a bit of um, electroplating. I have got a kit here, and I bought a kit, look, look, could even be 12 months ago, for, um, for zinc plating or CAD plating my sway chains and all that on my restorations. And what I've done in the past, I've done a lot of electrolysis for cleaning parts. I've got a big tub outside and I could, I've put engine blocks and gearboxes and all sorts of things in that tag over the years. It's not up and running at the moment. Um, I just haven't got the, the space or the wherewithal to use it. But um, <coughs> the, I've got a kit for doing my own zinc plating of the chains and things like that. And um, on the Grey Fergie's Australia, Ian Long recently um, pulled some bits off one of his tractors and sent them away down to, Bris down to the Gold Coast, I think he said, for 200 bucks and he got them um, beautifully chrome, nice show chrome. But um, what I'm thinking of doing, and, and I've got the buckets, I've got the stuff, I've got the, um, I've got the zinc um, anodes and all that stuff to do all this, but um, I used to just use a... Um, I've got a, like a an old, big old battery charger that we've set to permanent and I can actually, um, there's no adjustment on it, but it works on the surface area of your electrode and your anode. And so that's what I used for electrolysis and it worked great for that. Um, or you can just hook a car battery up, but it gets a bit savage, you know, um, you want to be able to control it. So I bought that the other day, I think it was a bit over a hundred dollars, um, made in China, of course. And, um, I'll try and, well, a couple of things with the, with the, um, oh, the, um, the thing on the back of the 135, not the position control, the other hitch, I can't even think of the name of the bloody thing there. The chains need all, um, <coughs> all re-zinking and re-cad plating. Um, the plates I got from Colin Taylor to fit it, they need re, um, re-cad plating, so, um, I bought it ages ago to do that. So I thought a little power supply like that would be handy to do that, just little knobs and bits and pieces. And um, I'm, I'm gonna try and get a nickel chromate solution going in a tub and um, yeah, see if I can do my own, a little bit of chrome work and just see. It's something I've always been interested in and I've just slowly been working towards. So it's something once I get a little pot set up on a bench or some bloody way, <laughs> And I get it going and it's easy to use. Well, I might be able to just, you know, cycle a few parts through um, over the week and things like that. So anyway, um, I'll have a play with that a bit later on. Um, it's got a phone, got a USB charger, um, two amp, um, five volt, two amp. It's got coarse adjustment for the voltage and fine, coarse and fine. So I just want to use it as a, um, on the bench for testing stuff and <coughs> Let me go on from there. Now, my mate Dave had come up to help with the um, with the shed on the weekend. He's a mechanic and he's a maintenance fitter for Vizzy that does all the Nutella bottles and all that sort of thing down in Brisbane. And um, we're we're talking about CRC and all that sort of stuff. And and CRC got this um, intake valve and turbo cleaner, and they gave me that. <coughs> and, and we're just talking about the stuff, and that um, Dave says in the in the Vizzy factory they use this penetrate, um, and he's the bloke that actually changes the moulds for the blow moulds, and um, you know does the maintenance and keeps things going. But they have to do mould changes, you know, when they change from say a Nutella to a water bottle or whatever. Um, and yeah, he said this CRC penetrates great stuff. They use it in the factory there, so that's. That's, yeah, we got talking about it all, of course. And, and I said, oh, I've got this intake valve from Turbo Cleaner. I said, oh, I don't know, never keen on this shit. And, um, and he says, oh, no, that works, good. And I said, does it? <coughs> I mean, he's got a Ford Ranger. <coughs> and he said, yeah, but every six months, you, you actually pull a vacuum line and you, while the car's running, you hook this into the inlet manifold. And I said, yeah, but I'm not sure on that stuff. I've never been keen on anything like that. And he said, no, nah, it works. So he reckons um, about every six months he does it on his Ford Ranger because they're known for um, getting a um, shitty manifold and all that, even with the catch can and all that on it, they still get a shitty manifold. And he reckons you try it on your Triton 
my Land Cruiser, and he said, I'm not sure if he said to warm it up, but anyway, I'll read the instructions twice. And um, he reckons you should see the shit comes out your exhaust. He says there's a bit of smoke and a bit of shit and bloody rubbish comes out the back, and um, he reckons it's a good thing. So, um, yeah, so it says easy to use, no intake manifold disassembly required, restores horsepower, well, everything does that, doesn't it? Um, yeah, intake valve and turbo cleaner. So anyway, we're going to run this through. Um, the Triton's the Triton's got about thirty thousand k's on it. <laughs> the um, the Land Cruisers hadn't got to twenty yet, but um, the Land Cruisers done some good hard running um, with its catch can and all on it. But I don't have a catch can on the Triton, so um, I'm I'm going to test it and see. He reckons it works fine. He uses it on his car and. Um, yeah, because I was so showing him the stuff CRC gave me, and and yeah, you know, he was very interested in the nickel anti seize, um, you know, in an aerosol. He said, "Oh, wouldn't that be great?" So he might talk to work about getting that. I don't know, and um, but he reckons this stuff here, she's good gear. So anyway, so we're going to try it. Um, yeah, 150 times more concentrated than fuel additives. Anyway, we're going to try that, and yeah, I'll. I'll see if I've got a camera there to go, <laughs> see what happens. Okay, so look, I've, that might have to do for today. I've done a walk around with the camera as usual over, over to the barn to show you where, I've, where I'm keeping the 148 and the TEA. Now I've cleaned the tractor parts out. Um, the parts out in the carport now are all gonna get put on one heavy duty pallet today. And I may see if I can get them in upstairs there where I pulled that big engine out. And that'll have that tidied up and over the next weeks um, we'll we'll try and shift tractors the weekend of um, the around the 16th of september out at kingaroy where um, there's a queensland heritage rally out there now they only have that every two years and it's going to be a big show um, so we're going to take the 135 over so yeah if you want to roll out for the day or bring a tractor or something um, have a talk to them um, it's Kingaroy and District Machinery, or look up Queensland Heritage Rally, Kingaroy. Um, I think the camping area is full, but the, um, the council's opened the showgrounds up for more camping and things like that, which is a little bit, you'd, you'd have to drive um, a couple of k's to get there. So anyway, we're gonna head out there, so that'll be a weekend out shortly. Father's Day next Sunday in Australia, so um, that'll be a day out and um, we'll We'll set up the front and have a barbecue. I don't know what we do. We'll do something. And um, yeah, so we'll leave it at that. Okay, the, <laughs> the camera just stopped for a moment. Um, thanks for dropping by, everybody. Have a safe week. We'll catch up next week. I'll, um, I'll start getting my hands dirty. I'll get over there to that engine and try and get a few bits on. I've got a, a little bit of parts washing to do for the pipes for the oil pump and all that. We have the oil pump now, so I should be able to get a fair bit of that buttoned up today. We'll see how we go. Um, my mate Paulie, that come and help with the shed, he's got a 12 volt fridge he wants to take to Kingaroy that's decided not to work. So I'll have a look at that this hour for him. And yeah, we'll go from there. We'll catch you all next week, eh? Well, I've just come across now to our little barn and then oh, we had a big storm come through a while ago and I've got a bit of bit of tidy up to do here there's a few little branches on the roof but I've had to hop in and um, yeah clear it out a little bit here so on our little barn we come through now that timber over there that was from when we got the fence line cleared and we haven't got there yet to tidy that up but this is a little set of yards we had for when we had horses and we could pop them in the yards here and we had water for them and we could open or close this gate and yeah, just keep them in here if we chose to. But what we use it for now is, yeah, I've got the TEA with the saw bench on the back over there and the 148 fits in here nicely. Now, the TEA with the saw bench, without the saw bench it fits nicely, with the saw bench it's, the roof's not quite covering the front of that bonnet, but I do have some iron tucked away, so we're going to extend that about, just on that one bay, about 1,200 up the top there. You can see where we sort of never finished it 20, 25 years ago. So, so this is where we've always kept the tractors that were 
just read the farm tractors that we you know knew we could just come and start jump on and drive away so so Jude's 148's there we've got the T20 there so that's got them out of the main shed now I had an old TEF20 over where the TEA is just an old bones one I'll show you shortly and I had a heap of pallets of parts from where I wrecked a 188 in here so I wasn't using the space very cleverly so um, that's the little barn and there's the other gate that we could lock up so when we had something in here so yeah still a lot of work to do around the paddock but um but oh, it's just a neat little place to store a couple of tractors for a while well that's where they'll live for good it's a it's out of the weather and um yeah the rain doesn't seem to blow in because it's a nice low roof and this is a lot of the brambles and rubbish left from clearing the fence line and look I've got about two thirds of the paddock done up the fence line now and we've still got like quite a few days worth of work in there yet and up in the corner there so yeah never nothing to do that's for sure okay there's one pallet and that's come out of where the 148 is over there now that's the high clearance front end out of the 135 multi-power we're not using that I'll probably sell that um, you can see where it's been all strengthened I didn't want high clear on a trekking tractor um, but anyway I've got new kingpins and kingpin housings and all in there now so I do have to take the hubs off yet and there's an old trailer tire I don't know how that got there but anyway an old seat I don't think the seat's too bad, but that'll have to be sorted, and we're going to try and get everything on one pallet. Um, now, look at this. Well, this is our weekend's work, and she's all done. I do have some screws to put in under under the flashing, like this. she's bolted down at the top, but underneath there's some screws, and I have to put the flashing. Um, along the back and put the gutter on and that's just sitting there we didn't do that the other day didn't have time we all wore out but yeah look we've got the the whole kit and caboodle done the feet bolted down um, oh I would have been buggered without the without the help of my mate Dave and Paul um, yeah this wouldn't have been anywhere near the size it is now over I have to get the loader and shift this and a couple of pallets from where the, over in the barn now this is where I wrecked a 188 there wet disc brake final drives I think they're okay but I don't know um, that's a multi power gearbox and a diff housing with independent PDO so I'm hoping to get them up on pallets if I can shift the tractors out of the way and use the pallet racking properly all this will go up on the pallet racking and just up here that I dragged around last night there's a, a little old TEF20 that'll have a turn one day um, you can see it's a high clear and it's got all bent front axles and, oh, she's, a, she's a lot of work but I do have an engine kit and all sitting waiting for that and a radiator and um, you know, auxiliary fuel tanks and I do have a lot tucked away for this but I do look at it sometimes and wonder whether it's worth restoring um, or whether we just um, buy another one and use it for parts. We'll see. We've got to finish the 65 first. And then we've got a line of tractors down there that has to come back in. So we're going to sort some of that out as well. But um, yeah, look at that. So. The next thing to do is, I've just got these parts here out of the weather, I've got to shift them out of the way, I've got to get the loader and clean the job site up. Um, I was thinking of putting some some filler in, like dig it out 100 mil and fill it, but I'm just not sure, I may just level it out because it's not a working bay, it's just to park things in. And yeah, look, we'll just see. Um, and yeah, I can start putting tractors in from inside here and that'll give me 
um, access to the pallet racking that I haven't been able to use to its full extent. And the pallet racking up there, well, um, there's a heap of old shelving in that up there. Plasma Dave, if you want some of that, you're probably welcome to come and get it. Um, an old engine and a chaff cutter. Some John Deere 420 high crop final drive parts. Well, I won't be doing another one of them, I, I don't believe. I'll get rid of that. Um, and yeah, the Howard Reduction TE20. The Grumpy Dave's old FE35. We call this Huey. Huey's old 35. And the FE35 up in the back corner with the coal start head. They're all going to go straight out of here. And the tractors that we're going to keep in here are uh, the 420 John Deere, the Goldie, the 135 over the back and yeah and hopefully where I pulled that big engine down and I've still got a heap of dad stuff up there to sort out. I'm going to be getting rid of a heap of um, I've got a heap of old shafting and pulleys and I'm not doing engines really. I've got some old flat belt shafting um, so uh, I have space up there that I can sort that out too so um, that box there that's just full of T20 parts and yeah, we have a 1948 TE20 and the engine next to it's all fully reconditioned, um, spare parts. So, so we're gonna get in there and um, yeah, over the next month or two, we'll, we'll try and work away at it. And yeah, we'll see if we can get that organized better, get some of the parts organized better, have tractors down below here that we can just start and get out of the way when we wanna use the four wheel, I'll use the pallet racking so anyway that's the project we'll see how we go with it